You know, there are so many different methods to memorizing the Bible. And one of the things that I want to do for you here on this YouTube channel is to not just share with you my method, but to also include and talk with people who've been doing this a lot longer than I have, people who've been memorizing the Bible for decades and ask them about their methods. Because honestly, the way that I do extend, extended scripture memory is really just a collection of a lot of different techniques that I've learned from different places. And so the more that I can bring in different ideas and different memory methods from these people who've been doing it for a while. Perhaps that's something you can steal, just different parts of this. So I'm going to be talking to a man today who's been nicknamed the Bible Memory Man. He goes around actually speaking entire books of the Bible in front of different congregations and groups of people. And he's going to share his three-part method for memory that he does. He spends an hour every day using this method, and he goes into detail about why he does certain things and how he does it. It's very intriguing, and maybe you'll learn and gather a little bit of something that you can use for your own uh, scripture memory method. Um, yeah, it's it's a fun conversation. I hope you'll enjoy it. Let's go ahead and dive in. Well, I am here with Professor Meyer. Professor Meyer is a, a professor at Shasta University, I believe in California, and has, if you were to look up his name on YouTube, you'd see a lot of different videos. He's well known, I believe, as the Bible Memory Man and goes around speaking at a lot of different churches, uh, actually saying entire books of the Bible. And I've listened to him say the book of James. I've listened to him say the book of First Peter, or maybe it was Second Peter, I can't remember. But I've just been really intrigued. And so I'm honored that Professor Meyer is willing to come on and I'm going to be, I want to just really unpack with you what your methods are for memory. And so hopefully someone can understand, you know, where you're coming from and what your goals are. But uh, yeah. So how long have you been doing this for? <laughs> A long time, man. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm 45. Okay. In a week or two. And I started memorizing scripture when I was about 25. But when I was a kid, I, I loved baseball and I still love baseball. So I collected baseball cards like crazy, like 100,000 cards. I used to work at a baseball card and memorabilia shop. And I was wow. So I was, long story short, like I was all into like memorizing the stats and the names and the averages and the places of birth and the oddities of, you know, you know, that Pete Rose had his 4,192nd hit. Breaking Ty Cobb's 4,191 hit on September 11th, 1988, I think it was, off, you know, Aaron Shaw of the San Diego Padres, a right-hander. Just weird stuff like that, you know. So but looking back, I could see how the Holy Spirit used that exercise as a kid of, of just memorizing stats and memorizing all those goodies on the back of the baseball cards to kind of hardwire my mind, as it were, to do what I'm doing now. Yeah. No, I think, I think we just, uh, it, it happens to a lot of us. Like, you know, I, I know kids, I, I was never like this, but they would watch movies and they could quote the movie after seeing it one time. And they could just like spit off these quotes. Like we have that innate ability with our memory. It's just a lot of times we either don't develop it or we don't enjoy it enough to keep going with it. But it sounds like you, something happened is, was there something that happened at age 25 that really prompted you to really get into it more? Um, 9-11, I guess, uh, you know, I was working with my family's construction company in the Chicagoland area, doing great, wasn't in full-time ministry, you know, uh, I was going to church on Sundays, but that was pretty much the extent of it. And then I just kind of had a talk with God and, you know, like, what am I, what do you want me to do? You know, you've endowed me with, with unique abilities and unique gifts and i.e. the ability to memorize. And I want to use them for your glory. I don't want to waste it, you know. So long story short, I went to Bible college in California. And then uh, while I was on the car ride from Illinois to California, that's when I like literally first started really seriously memorizing. I mean, I knew like John 3.16, Genesis 1.1 and the famous ones, you know, from Awana and stuff like that, kids clubs. But on that car ride out, the pastor of the church, I'm thinking to myself, why didn't you ask me to do this 10 years ago? <laughs> He's like, well, why don't you memorize this portion from the Sermon on the Mount about not being concerned about tomorrow while you're on this car drive out to California? So I did. And I began to, once I internalized that portion, and I began to really better understand the Word of God and better understand um, faith. I began to better understand uh, the mind of God. 
and uh, and my faith grew from dwelling on those truths and precepts, and I wanted more and more and more and more, especially going into Bible college. You know, you want to be able to have a really fantastic foundation of memorized verses to, to draw upon. And so it just kind of took off from there. That's cool. Um, I've heard you in different interviews talk about your method for memorization, and I really want to dive into a lot more of that, like kind of the nitty gritty stuff of, of, uh, of what you're doing. Can you explain, I've heard you talk about this three part process and that you sit down probably about an hour a day. I don't know if that's continued even now, but, um, yeah, can you kind of dive into a little bit more of what that looks like for you? Sure. Well, these are, uh, uh simple, but complicated at the same time so let me explain a little bit uh and these are what i use or a combination of these every single day to you know to get to where i need to go and so number one is to memorize by by reading but the, the key or the keys are number one is is to read aloud if you want to memorize you know nobody in the west really reads aloud uh, you definitely can't do it in the library which i'm in right now i'm talking yeah <laughs> and you can't read a lot in the in the airport. I mean, you know, it's just people will believe like you're crazy. So we just live in a world where even at home when we're reading our Bibles, we don't read aloud. But but to be able to you know, see the Bible is originally originally meant more for the ears than than the eyes. And um, you know, its faith comes by hearing. You know, be doers of the word, not hearers only. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read aloud unto all the holy brethren. Blessed is he who reads aloud. So you just have this built-in orality that has just been shattered in, in the church today. It's gone. But yeah. we're trying to put it back together slowly but surely through these kind of interviews and through these, you know, these pillars. But number one is to read it aloud. Because when you read aloud, then your mind, a different part of your mind and your eye and your mouth and your ear, they're all working together in, in unison. And not only reading it aloud, but, but looking the, at the page of the Bible when you're doing it, because it's the power of format. Um, format is such an important, I, I, look, I have the same Bible I had when I was 13. So 30 years I've had the same Bible. Really? That's cool. And the reason being is not because of the terrible notes I put in there when I was 20 something, you know, but just the, because of the power of format, you know, where John three is on the page, you know, where Revelation one is on the page. Yeah. And, and the Jews yeah. really get this, you know, if you go from here to the end of the world, and you buy a Talmud, which is like an Encyclopedia Britannica size collection of how to live a good kosher Jewish life outside the land of Israel in the diaspora. If you go from here to the end of the world, and you buy one, page 58 is always the same in every single copy. Because they get it. They get the power of format. So reading it aloud and looking at the text when you read it, number one. Number two is to memorize by hearing, by hearing explain a little bit like i touched on earlier you know the bible is originally meant more for the ears than the eyes there's so much uh, just look at like for example like in the book of jonah okay which is short and if you just did one verse a week you could memorize the whole book of jonah in a year one verse a week that's nothing but yeah. look at the, you have the voice of a narrator you have the voice of yahweh you have the voice of jonah you have the voice of the prophets or not the prophets the, the sailors you have the voice of the king right and you have the voice of the, the common people, and then you have a sea monster, and then you have you have a, a, a plague or the threat of a plague, and you have, I mean, you just got everything that you would want and need for some for a fantastic drama. Yeah. And yeah. and and to be able to to memorize that and think along those lines, to to kind of, okay, is the narrator happy or sad, you know, or is the prophet happy? Are, are the sailors afraid or really afraid? And then to include that in, 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 in the speech while you're speaking, that's huge. And one of the ways that can come is, is through just hearing it out loud yourself as you're, as you're reciting to yourself. Oh, do I want to put the emphasis here or there? Right? Is he ha it's not flat. It's living. It's, it's alive. But, we, yeah. but when we read it, usually not we, but when it's read in church, it's read flat. And you know, if you were turn the, yeah. to turn the volume down on the person speaking at church doing the, the Bible reading, and you would say, if you didn't know what they were saying, you know, be like, you would be like, I don't believe them. Whatever they're saying, whatever they're reading, it doesn't look like they believe it. It's just boring and flat, and there's no oomph to it, which, which there should be. 
But hearing it, especially really, I can't recommend one, but they have really good versions of the Bible read aloud. Maybe you know one. And where there's different actors and there's different emotions. And just to be able to pick yeah. it up from that. Yeah. And along those lines also, that's the best way for little kids to memorize, is to hear it. So I've got uh, four kids under 10. And, you know, not every night, but often I'll tell them scripture when they go to bed at night time. And I'll just tell it dramatically from memory and I'll incorporate them into it, kind of act it out, have some fun. But, you know, you just need to tell it to them a few times. Right. And, and they get it. They know Exodus one. Right. They know Jonah one. They, not because, you know, they were commanded to memorize it. I'm not like that. You know, it's just they've been hurt. They heard it so much. They get it. And yeah. that's the way it was in antiquity, too. Is they, they just kept, they heard it so often that that's how they memorize. That's, you know, Josephus says, first century Jewish historian, that that every Israelite, I mean, every you can interpret it however you want. Right. But every Israelite. Right knew the history, oh no, I'm sorry, it was Jerome, I think Jerome, in the 4th century. He said every Israelite in Bethlehem, he said, knew the history of the Jews or had the Bible memorized from, from Adam to Zerubbabel. And, and jo- Josephus speaks along the same lines, how that their hearts, because of going up to the high holy feast three times a year and hearing it, right, that their hearts have the word of God etched on it forever. Number three, then finally, is to memorize by writing it out. And throughout my daily one hour kind of time block, this is how I would spend most of my time. It's, it's through this method. And I just like to say, like, it's really hard for me to memorize. It's not like, you know, it's like, I mean, it takes me on average an hour a day, every day for a month, maybe to do a chapter. And that's not even like having it ready to stand up in front of X amount of eyeballs and speak it, right? It's just, yeah. you know, yeah. kidding. But so, you know, our Bibles are printed in such a way where it's not easy on the eye. It's not conducive, the way they're printed, it's not conducive to memorize. So that's why I, through master books, we made what's called Memorization Study Bible. So basically what it does is, it, this is how I memorize. So it takes each verse, and instead of like having, look, chapter divisions didn't come into the Bible until 1260 AD. Then it was broken down further in 1550 AD by Robert de Stephanus, a printer in Paris. who He's the one who made verse divisions. Now I'm not. Uh, aligning myself with the creator of verse divisions, but I'm just saying we've take, I've taken those verses and I've broken them down further to make it digestible to memorize. And so the way I've broken it down, it's like all the conjunctions, all the ands and all the buts and all the ifs, they're all lined up. And, and I learned that the ancients, when they would memorize by writing it out, that they would keep eight words or less on each line. Hmm. And that's called an eyes glance, an eyes glance. So when you're driving down the highway going 75 miles an hour, you know, and you see a sign that says, you know, orange mocha frappuccino, right? That you'll remember to buy it, orange mocha frappuccino, which is only three words. <laughs> so it's a, they use that to this very day to, to get into your short-term memory. But just, it's not rocket science. It really isn't, Josh. It's just writing it out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Eight words or less on each line, lining up the ands, the buts, the ifs, making it go short. And then on the column, on the far right column of each line, just a number on how many words are in each line which is kind of a crutch that can help you in the process of memorizing it and then once i have it memorized i kind of lose those numbers they kind of fade away and so if you can say it when you write it finally if you can say it when you write it then your mind your eye your hand your mouth your ear they're all working together in unison so when you say those numbers on the right are you you're using those and saying like are you checking your work like you're writing the line counting the numbers and making sure that you got the right number correct Yep, that's it. It's like that's a perfect way to describe it. Yep, it's just kind of like a word sheet, kind of like a, like like I use like the analogy of a crutch, just something. Yeah. If you're drawn up, like, well, I know there's four lines or four words, I should say, and then you know I know it begins with an and a but or an if or whatever. If you can do it that way, and just to instead of like going for the whole steak, you know, you kind of just step back, right, and take just little pieces of it, you know, and and whether you read it or whether you write it or whether you hear it or hybrids or combinations of those which are endless like my wife for example you know she when she does memorize she just does shorthand the first letter of each verse like for god's love the world right f-d-s-t-l boom, boom, boom and that works for her so good for her you know but whether you write it whether you read it whether you whether you hear it right you got to keep it because if you don't use it you lose it and and that of course is meditation 
Yeah. I think what, one of the things that you're saying here that I've found especially true for myself as I've been doing a lot of memory is that it is, it is so key, that verbal aspect. Um, and for me, it's like when I'm driving and I'm in by myself, I'm like driving my son back from school or driving, you know, after having dropped him off and I'm just repeating what I'm, what I've got, uh, in memory while I'm driving back. And what it, it does is a couple things is one, I think verbally, like you're saying it, it, it incorporates another one of my senses, you know, actually multiple as I'm going along, cause I'm actually speaking it and hearing it as I go along. But I think it also helps me to see where I, where I'm missing things. Like I, I'll, I'll be saying it and then I'll just come to this point. It's like, I, I don't remember. I gotta, I gotta go back and review that part, <laughs> you know, go back and do that. Sure. But I think 100%. that's one mistake that a lot of people make is they come into it and it, and they think of, of Bible memory as a very silent act. And, and I like what you're saying here where no, actually the more verbal, the more loud you can make it, the, the better that it's going to stick with you. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I, I've noticed that the, the more I speak in front of a congregation or a crowd, the more I speak a particular book or passage, the, the, the easier it gets yeah. along those lines because there's just something there's just something about about the you know your mouth shaping the words and speaking it forth and having it go forth like i'll be speaking revelation from memory and sometimes my mind will get a little bit ahead of my mouth because you know you know it so well because you've been been mulling it over for so long and yeah. and in regards to meditation you're right like throughout the course because i think meditation is like it's really, really important. You know, it has kind of has a bad rap, the word meditation, you know, yeah. but it's, it's obviously it's a biblical concept in Joshua chapter one, verse eight. And, you know, and the idea there is to, to remember he's talking to kind of semi-nomadic cheap goat kind of people, right? And that word yeah. for meditate is call upon, call up, chew upon, think upon, put it back, call it up, think upon it, chew upon it, put it back. That idea of a beast, cow, an ox calling up the, the the grass, the straw, the hay, and then refining it better, and then regurgitating it, and then swallowing it, and then that—that's what the word means. That's what we're supposed to be doing with scripture, according to yeah. one eight of yeah. Joshua. We're supposed to be doing that day and night, and not only on the one side of the coin does it help really reinforce and strengthen what is in your heart, so you don't lose it because you're using it. But the other side of the coin is according to one eight there. It'll give you, spiritually speaking, prosperity and success. And we want prosperity and success, spiritually speaking. And that's that's what it does. I mean, it is one of the things uh, uh, else that you said that I really like is there is, because even there's there's a lot of other modern memory techniques. Uh, I'm incorporating one that's called the... Um, uh, what is it, the memory palace? So, you know, taking in and incorporating what, what's known as a memory palace into that. And, and no matter how you slice it, it's always going to be hard. Like there's not an easy way to memorize. There's just maybe a more efficient way for you or a more efficient way for me to memorize. But no matter how you do it, it's, it's always going to be a lot of work. You know what I mean? It's true. And whenever you see books like you see on Amazon, like, you know, easy ways to memorize, like, no thanks. You just know it's fake news instantly because it's it's difficult it really yeah. but you know it's yeah. like the more you do it the better you get at it and it's kind of like the stronger your if there are memory muscles whatever the technical term is right they do get stronger they do get better yeah. they really yeah. do and the more you do it the easier quote unquote that that it gets but you know it's you got to start somewhere right and yeah you know, you've got to figure out what technique or techniques work for you right and and improvise and adapt those if necessary and then you got to do it every day you really do have to, to at least for my opinion right because if you don't lose it you're going to lose it man. yeah no i think uh, that's one of the things that i've been trying to repeat to myself is that i'm i'm memorize i want to memorize for life right i don't want to memorize just so that i can say it next month or next year like i want to memorize it so that when i'm 80 i can still say it and that that approach for me makes all the difference in the world like because i i, I want to dedicate i'm willing to dedicate more time to it because I want it to last a lot longer. Um, and along those same lines, I'm curious for you, uh, because I've even noticed I'm working on my eighth book right now. 
And as I'm hitting my eighth book, obviously I'm, you know, I'm having to spend more and more time on the seven before to make sure that they stay in there. Uh, and that I'm reviewing them enough that they, that they, like you say, that they stick. Um, how much, when you're talking about that hour's worth of time, how much of that for you is new stuff versus having to go back and, and remind yourself of the old stuff? Well, number one is, is, you know, to be honest with you, I haven't memorized anything new in like two years. Okay. Because I'm trying to keep first and second Thessalonians and second Timothy and a couple other ones that I haven't spoke in front of people yet. So I can't just put those on the shelf and trust that if I came back to it in six months, it would still be there. Yeah, that's after 20 years, you know. But there are books that I can put up on the shelf like Jonah or Joel or Nahum or Habakkuk or Genesis 1 to 11 or whatever, right, that I don't have to, you know. So number one is is that, you know, like I'm, it's really hard for me, like you're saying, to keep up with what you've got, number one. And then number two is, is um, that's along those lines of review, that's where meditation comes into play. And I think once again, you know, I think meditation is one of the, the keys to success that, that no one is implementing, generally speaking, because no one really memorizes. Pastors don't memorize, generally speaking. They might have a few verses here and there, whatever. You know, they don't memorize. When's the last time you went to church? And before he gave the sermon on, you know, John 4 or whatever, he spoke it with power. It never happens, you know. And so they don't do it. Parents don't do it. They just don't. No one memorizes, generally speaking, you know. Yeah. Professors yeah. in Christian colleges don't memorize. And even though we sing the song, that word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee, you know, and you know the verse, no one does it. So, but meditation is huge. It's huge to growth. It's huge. Like, if my words abide in you. If <laughs> it's well, the, the way his words abide in you is for you to memorize them, you know, the way yeah. you know, let the word of Christ dwell richly where on the shelf behind me on my phone, no, in you and, and all that all comes and there's more verses, as you know, that all comes from memorizing and reviewing and meditating. And, you know, as you think in your heart, so are you right? If you think you went from blue to the youth to the zoo to you by series of time chains and millions of years and you're another brick on the wall and you're just whatever, you know, you're just here and gone. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's, it's going to show. But if you think on the truth on those precepts in your heart, that you're made in the image and likeness of the living God, that you have boldness and access and confidence to approach God in prayer, that whatever, right, that in, enlightens you and informs you and instructs you and empowers you. And, and all of that is rooted or based in, in, in meditation. And so meditation is how I go from A to Z, Genesis to Revelation. And then I'm always reviewing. So in that hour in the morning, I'm, I'm working on keeping, like today I was, it was First Thessalonians. You know, wrote that out from memory, you know, said it. That was, and then throughout the course of the day, like whenever I have downtime, which isn't a lot, <laughs> you know, a parent with four kids under 10 and all that kind of fun stuff, you know, I review. So in my review, I'm in somewhere in Revelation 11, you know, seal up the things which the seven thunders uttered and do not write them. The angel whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised up his hand towards heaven and swear by him who lives forever and ever, who created the heaven and the things that are in it and the earth and the things that are in it and the sea and the things that are in it, that there should be delay no longer. So I just pick that. But do you see how easy that would be to memorize just with those hooks there, you know, the things that are in it, the things that are in it, the things that are in it, right? He said that three times, boom, 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 you know? Yeah. So, so once, you know, despite people being scared to death of the apocalypse uh, in, in regards to understanding it, which is a different story, it, should, <laughs> it is the easiest one to memorize. It really yeah. is. It was John crafted that by the guidance of the spirit. He crafted that it's like a play. It really is. The chapter and the verse divisions there do violence to, to the flow of, the nat of what John intended, naturally intended. And yeah. it's just interesting yeah. if you take those away, those chapter and verse divisions, and you treat it like a play, that which is a different story, but it's so much easier to memorize. 
Yeah. I've noticed that a lot of the stuff that you memorize is in the King James Version, or maybe all of it is, the stuff that I've heard you recite. Um, is there a reason that you went with the King James Version? I feel like I feel like that's a big decision for somebody to choose. Like you've kind of got to go with it. And then once you make the choice, that's that's kind of what you got to do. Is Was that the way it ended up? You just happened at King James or did you make a, yeah, an intentional choice? No, it was not. I mean, I, my parents bought me a King James Bible, a Schofield Study Bible, and that's what I had and that's what I used. So I'm not King James yeah. only. Yeah. Oh, um, you aren't? Okay. Uh, no, but I... I, was, I can speak in a King James only church and inspire them to memorize, you know, yeah. because I speak King James, you know, but I, like Revelation's new King James, for example. Okay. And, um, you know, look, it's just, I speak in so many different churches and so many in front of so many different people. Like, at the, you know, the, we're going to be the Ark and Connor and Creation Museum again this summer. And I like using a translation that is, you know, you really can't go wrong <laughs> with King James yeah. or New King James, you know, because you know how it is. People fight over those things, unfortunately. Not unfortunately. Some are worth fighting over. Some of the translations yeah. are worth fighting over. It's true. But now it's not the time for that. But but I can speak anywhere, The long story short, right, yeah. for the most part, using one of those two. And I like how, I just like how King James sounds. I like the Ds. I like the vowels. You know, I like, it just sounds... You know, <laughs> it sounds like it has the gravity of, of what you're actually speaking to. It yeah, does. I can get it that. really does. There's a difference. There's a difference in, right. And, and, yeah. and just the, like you were saying, the gravity, it sounds, it sounds more authoritative in certain instances than other translations. Yeah. Well, as we close up, um, do you have anything like somebody who's watching this right now that is really wanting to dive more into extended tr uh, scripture memory? Uh, do you have any like tips or any, anything else that you would add to what you've already shared that might be able to help somebody in those situations? Well, probably number one is no, no one's going to do it with you. <laughs> You're going to be alone probably. Hmm. And um, that's just probably how it's going to be. I mean, people might start at first with you, but they're not going to probably part of that is just because of the world we live in, just the, the wireless world, the copy, paste, Facebook, tweet, file, forget where no one has to memorize anything anymore. But don't be discouraged that you're alone. Uh, just stay committed to doing at least, you know, one or two verses a week. And like we've been talking about, I prefer to do things that have a flow to them, a chapter, a book, a portion, something that kind of connects like Lego blocks. So number one, keep it up. Number two, remember that what you're doing you know, look, if I was to give you a hundred dollars a day, every day for every verse you memorize, you'd probably go bonkers, <laughs> you know, <you'd> crazy, <laughs> memorizing like, like nuts. But sometimes because we're people, we're dust, we forget that the Bible really is more precious than rubies. And God's word really is quick, or living, powerful and sharp than any two-edged sword. And it's, and it's, it's the word of God, you know, and, uh, you know, a lot of people don't think that way, <laughs> unfortunately, even in our circles, which is yeah. But but remember that what you're doing is not a waste of time. In fact, it's the opposite. It's one of the most important things you can be doing with your time is putting the oracles of the living God, a heart, having a heart well stocked with God's mind. And, and you know, it's not going to make you perfect, obviously. It doesn't make you better than anyone else, you know. But what it does is it gives, it, it, it equips you. And yeah. it gives you the best fighting chance that you have to overcome this crazy world that we live in. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Well, we'll be putting, I'll put a link to this, the book, the the memory study Bible, I think that you have in the description of this video. Is there any other place that people can find you on online? Yeah, just the search for Tom Meyer or the Bible memory man.com. Bible memory man.com. Awesome. You know, answer questions anyone might have. So yeah, follow up, please. All right. Well, Professor Meyer, thank you so much for your time, for sharing that. And uh, yeah, I, I just, I hope that everyone else was as blessed as I was. I appreciate you taking that time. Thanks. Thanks for reaching out. And it was great. Let's do it again.
Thanks so much for making it all the way through this interview. If you're still here right now, go ahead uh, and like this video. I put all of the resources in the description below. And if you really are into extended scripture memory, I encourage you to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Go ahead and go over to BibleMemoryGoal.com and add your email so that you can become part of this community of people that are making scripture memory a priority. Thanks so much and have a great week.